Hello all. In my last presentation, I had briefed you on smog. I had given you a brief introduction to smog, how it is formed, what are its effects, how can we control, etc. In this presentation, we shall discuss on the different types of smog. There are basically two types of smog. Number one, the London smog or the classical smog or the sulfurous smog. Number two, the Los Angeles smog or the photochemical smog. Now, London smog is also called as classical smog or sulfurous smog. It is also called as reducing smog. Now, it is called sulfurous smog because it has got oxides of sulfur more. It is called reducing uh, smog because uh, uh, the sulfur dioxide present in it is reducing in nature. It is called London smog because it was first observed in London in 1952. Similarly, the photochemical smog is called so because it, the components of photochemical smog are formed via photochemical reactions. It is called Los Angeles smog because it was first observed or felt in Los Angeles. It is also called as oxidizing smog because the components in it, the oxides of nitrogen and ozone, are oxidizing in nature. Now we shall take up each type of smog individually. Let us first take up classical smog. As I said earlier, it is also called as sulfurous smog or London smog or industrial smog or reducing smog. It was first observed in 1952 in London and it created a lot of traffic jam. Almost for four days, four to five days, the transportation system was virtually brought to a standstill. So that was first observed. Its effect was first observed in London. Let us see in detail what classical smoke is. It is usually found in during cold weather along with high water vapor and high level of sulfur emission. So when these three conditions, cold weather, high water vapor and high level of sulfur emissions come together, we can observe classical smog. Now you would have felt or you would have heard about the uh, smog formed during the winter season. December, January in Delhi. Okay, so that is because of this classical smog. Now, it is mainly because of the burning of large amount of sulfur containing coal or sulfur containing fuel. Alright, now the main constituents of classical smog is soot along with fly ash, sulfur dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium sulfate particles. It is the soot which gives a hazy appearance. Now, when, during our uh, introduction to smog, we have said that it forms a hazy appearance and it blocks the visibility, etc. Now, it is the soot which creates that hazy appearance and blocks the visibility. Now, when the sulfur dioxide is released, what happens? It reacts with the hydroxide present in air and forms sulfuric acid which comes down as acid rain. So uh, what is this? This means that one form of air, one effect of air pollution that is classical smog is resulting in another type of air pollution that is acid rain. And when acid rain reaches the earth, it does not on, it, it does not only uh, result of air pollution; it becomes a source of water pollution also. So the classical smog or the smog, the component in smog, reacts with atmospheric hydroxide to form sulfuric acid, which comes down as acid rain, which is going to pollute the earth and the water on water bodies on earth. So the effect is doubling. Okay, the harmful effect is increasing. 
The other chemicals present in classical smog are sulfur trioxide, sulfuric acid and ammonium sulfate. Now let us go for the next uh, slide that is the reactions of classical smog. Now uh, we have seen that classical smog is chemically a reducing mixture due to the presence of sulfur dioxide. Now this sulfur dioxide, how is it formed? The sulfur content which is emitted reacts with oxygen from sulfur dioxide. Now the particulates present in the atmosphere acts as catalysts. It catalyzes this particular reaction. Remember, this is one way of formation of sulfur dioxide. Sometimes the sulfur dioxide itself will be emitted into the atmosphere also. So if the sulfur is present, if sulfur alone is present, it gets oxidized with, from the, uh, with the oxygen and forms sulfur dioxide. Now the sulfur dioxide again reacts with oxygen and forms sulfur trioxide. Again here, also the particulates are catalyzing the reaction. Sulfur trioxide will react with the water molecules and forms sulfuric acid. It reacts with the ammonia present to form ammonium bisulfate. All right. Now these three, sulfur trioxide, sulfuric acid, ammonium bisulfate, etc., can be considered as the secondary pollutant. You know what is a secondary pollutant? Pollutants formed due to the reaction between primary pollutants or reaction between primary pollutant and the components in air. Okay, so the components of uh, classical smoke can be uh, uh, listed as sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, sulfuric acid, ammonium bisulfate. These secondary pollutants may also lead to acid rain. Okay, and uh, acid rain will lead to water pollution. So one type of pollution is leading to another type of pollution. Okay, so the uh, effect on the environment is increasing. Now let us see what are the effects of classical smog. It causes irritation to eyes, nose and throat. It uh, leads to respiratory diseases, diseases related to respiratory system like asthma, pneumonia, bronchitis. Uh, even uh, overexposure to the components of classical smog may lead to lung cancer. The classical smoke also leads to poor visibility which may result in motor accidents. The drivers may not be able to see uh, uh, vehicles coming opposite to them. Now this we usually uh, observe in Delhi, in India, we find it in Delhi during the month of December and January during the winter season. Now, classical smog, the components of classical smog also lead to breathing difficulties in both human beings and animals and also it re results in acid rain which will affect the uh, metal and stone monuments and also it will affect the water bodies. Okay, so these are the effects of uh, classical smog. This is the general effects of smog also. Now, how can we control classical smog? The classical smog can be controlled by avoiding pollution or you avoid burning of sulfur containing fuels because the major component result, uh, uh, what is it, a major component uh, responsible for classical smog is sulfur containing sul oxides of sulfur. So you stop burning uh, fuel containing sulfur. You go for renewable energy source like sunlight, wind, etc. So you need not depend on fossil fuels and uh, uh, try to have uh, chimneys of the industries at quite a uh, high, uh, with, with a great height so that the particulates, the pollutants are released higher in the atmosphere and it will not be near the uh, earth's surface. An industrial exhaust can be equipped with scrubbers which will reduce the sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide level. You use it, uh, use alkaline scrubbers. The sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide will be 
removed to some extent using if you use alkaline scrubbers. You can even use electrostatic precipitators to reduce the particulates. The particulates can be precipitated. It will not be released into the atmosphere. Vehicular emissions and industrial emissions must be managed. It, can, it must be uh, treated before emitting it to the atmosphere and use as much as possible public transport. Re reduce the uh, number of vehicles on road. So these are the few control measures. So I have briefed you regarding what is classical smog, what are the components in classical smog, what are the effects of classical smog and how can we control the same. If you have any clarifications to be done, please feel free to ask me. Thank you.